Magavan and folks. Today we have some multivariable calculus in the form of the double integral from 0 to 1 of log x times log y over 1 minus xy whole thing cubed dx dy. And this is quite nice because look, x is bound between 0 and 1 and y is also bound between 0 and 1. So that means their product is also bound between 0 and 1, which means we could expand 1 over 1 minus xy as the geometric series. That is to say, in this case, we have the sum over k from 0 to infinity of x to the k times y to the k, and that's all fine and dandy, but we're not interested in 1 over 1 minus xy, we're interested in 1 over 1 minus xy whole thing cubed. So why not differentiate this thing partially with respect to x? So differentiating with respect to x yields 1 over 1 minus xy whole thing squared. And of course, there's going to be a negative sign here. But the partial derivative of x times y, 1 minus x times y, that is, is equal to negative y. So that just cancels out. And on the right-hand side, we're left with the sum over k from 0 to infinity, k times x to the k minus 1 times y to the k. And notice here that because of the k up front, k equal to 0 just leads to a leading 0 term. So we can skip that and start the sum from k equal to 1 instead. Okay, we have a square now, and that's not half bad, but now we want, again, a cube. So we'll, we'll just differentiate partially with respect to x again. And this implies that we have something over 1 minus xy whole thing cubed. There will be a negative 2 times y up top, but again, because of the negative y, it cancels out. And we have 2y squared. And on the right, the sum over k from 1 to infinity of k times k minus 1 times x to the k minus 2 times y to the k. And notice here that we can now start our sum from k equal to 2 instead. And of course, we can expand using 1 over 2y squared. So we have 1 over 1 minus xy whole thing cubed equal to 1 half the sum over k from 1 to infinity of k times k minus 1, x to the k minus 2, y to the k minus 2. No, oh, wait. Like I said, we can start the sum at k equal to 2 instead. But just because it would be nicer to start the sum at k equal to 0 or k equal to 1, I'm going to produce a shift in the index variable, and that is, why not let k minus 2 equal to n. So that way the sum now starts at 0. So we have 1 over 1 minus xy whole thing cubed equal to 1 half the sum over n from 0 to infinity. Uh, what exactly is k? Well, k will be n plus 2 and k minus 1 is just n plus 1. And we have x to the n, y to the n. And that's our series expansion that was required. And this implies that the target integral i is now one half the double integral from 0 to 1 of the sum over n from 0 to infinity. We have x to the n, y to the n times log x, log y, dx, dy. No, 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 no. We'll now switch up the order of the integration and summation operators to get one half the sum over n from 0 to infinity of the double integrals from 0 to 1 of x to the n, y to the n, log x, log y, dx, dy. Terribly sorry about that. That's nice because now we have a double integral of a product of functions, one being a function of x and the other being a function of y. So that means we can write this as 1 half the sum over n from 0 to infinity integral 0 to 1 x to the n log x dx times the integral from 0 to 1 y to the n log y dy. And of course, the only difference between these two integrals is the notation for the dummy variable. So they're exactly the same thing. And this implies that the target integral i is in fact one half the sum over n from 0 to infinity. Integral 0 to 1 x to the n log x dx whole thing squared. And evaluating this thing is actually pretty damn simple. I mean, all we need is some integration by parts. So we have integral 0 to 1 
x to the n log x dx equal to x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 log x. Limits are 0 and 1. Minus 1 over n plus 1 integral 0 to 1 x to the n plus 1 over x dx. So there's some cancellation happening over here. And of course, the first the first term converges to 0 in both these limits. That is trivial to show using L'Hopital's rule or something. So now we have negative 1 over n plus 1 integral 0 to 1 x to the n dx, which is again trivial. So we have negative 1 over 1 plus n whole thing squared as the result of our integral. Now turning back to the evaluation of the target integral, we need to square this result and sum it over n from 0 to infinity. So this implies that I'm forgetting something, aren't I? A few moments later. Oh yeah, I forgot the two most important bits. Terribly sorry about that. So, wait a minute, maybe I should just move things around. It's not exactly a math spy with I video without some bloopers, I mean, come on, that's... That's probably half the reason you guys subscribe, the other half being the okay cools and the terribly sorries about that. And let me just move quite a bit of stuff around and correct this. Again, the fixes are part of a maths 505 video as well. These terms are independent of the x and y variables with respect to which we're integrating. So yeah, we could take them outside the operators. And again over here, we have n plus 2 and n plus 1. I was thinking there's something wrong so far with the integration results I'm seeing. And now it's all fine and dandy. So we have n plus 2 times n plus 1, and I might need a, a little bit more writing space. And that should be enough. n plus 1 times n plus 2. And this is cool, because now the target integral is 1 half times the sum over n from 0 to infinity, n plus 1 times n plus 2 times the square will get rid of the negative sign, so we have 1 plus 1 over 1 plus n to the fourth power. And of course, we immediately get rid of one of them. So we're left with 1 half the sum over n from 0 to infinity. n plus 2 over n plus 1 whole thing cubed. And how exactly are we supposed to evaluate this thing? Well, again, this is pretty straightforward. We have 1 half sum over n terribly sorry about that, of n over n plus 1 cubed plus twice the sum over n of 1 over n plus 1 cubed, which is, of course, quite familiar to us. But not exactly this sum over here, but we can fix that if we just expand using 0. So the version of 0 I'm using is 1 minus 1, so that we have 1 half the sum over n of n plus 1 over n plus 1 cubed is just going to yield 1 over n plus 1 squared. We have a negative sign, sum over n, of 1 over n plus 1 whole thing cubed minus twice the sum over n, 1 over n plus 1, again, whole thing cubed, which means, oh wait, there's a plus sign over here, so you have a negative 1 times something plus twice of that something, which means you have just one times that something left. In other words, we have one half the sum over n of one over one plus n squared plus the sum over n of one over one plus n cubed, which we recognize as values of the Riemann zeta function. That is to say we have one half of zeta two plus zeta 3, zeta 3 being, of course, Apery's constant. And we know that zeta 2 converges to pi squared over 6, but this just looks all the more epic. So we conclude that the double integral from 0 to 1 of log x log y, that looks way too cursive, over 1 minus xy whole thing cubed dx dy equals zeta 2 plus zeta 3 over 2, as in 
the average value or arithmetic mean of zeta 2 and 3. Absolutely beautiful stuff. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Do drop me a follow on Instagram as well. Thank you. See you next time.